Hello, my name is Kaylee Bullock and I'm a second year medical student at Oakland University William Beaumont School of Medicine. And I'm here today to talk to you about my research on the attitudes and self-assessment of physical medicine and rehabilitation clinicians in addressing reproductive health care needs for women with physical disabilities. After learning that women with physical disabilities often experience higher rates of adverse reproductive health outcomes and have inadequate access to reproductive health care as compared to their non-disabled peers, I became interested in what clinicians' perspectives were on this disparity and what they thought help, might help combat it. Review of recent literature revealed that there have been qualitative studies examining obstetrician and gynecologist perspectives on this issue. However, there's little known about the perspectives of PMNR clinicians in this area. Because PMNR clinicians frequently work with women with physical disabilities, it's important to include them on these conversations related to reproductive health care, as such concerns related to reproductive and sexual function may come up in their day-to-day -day practice. To better understand PMNR perspectives on this topic, I qualitatively analyzed the transcripts of three focus group interviews for themes related to clinicians' attitudes, approaches to, and perceived barriers in addressing the reproductive health needs of women with physical disabilities. These focus groups were conducted at large metropolitan rehabilitation centers as part of a larger study organized by my collaborator at the University of Michigan. As the table demonstrates, these interviewees included PM&R physicians and other rehabilitation-related specialists, but also physical therapists, clinical psychologists, and a nurse practitioner, all of whom are integral members of the interdisciplinary rehabilitation teams that care for women with physical disabilities. The most common and salient themes that emerged from the analysis of these transcripts and that were shared across many of the participants related to level of comfort, informed decision-making, and collaboration. First, clinicians' level of comfort with discussing reproductive health concerns with their patients varied greatly. However, it appeared that clinicians who felt patients' particular disability or health concern fell within their domain of expertise were more comfortable talking about these topics than others. For example, the first quoted clinician here often addressed issues related to pelvic pain and so was accustomed to discussing sexual function with their patients. However, the last quoted clinician most frequently worked with pediatric patients and was less comfortable talking about reproductive health. Second, informed decision-making between patient and provider regarding a patient's reproductive health goals and choices was important to these clinicians. As demonstrated by this quote, a majority of these clinicians felt that patient's autonomy regarding her reproductive decisions should take precedence over tendencies of clinical paternalism, even when clinicians felt uncertain about the potential medical risks involved with her decision. This was not to say that clinicians thought expert recommendations to be irrelevant or that potential medical risks null, but rather increased provider education on unfamiliar topics and conversations focused on a risk benefit assessment of a reproductive health decision were more appropriate first steps in these kinds of situations than rigid recommendation. And, and third, clinicians expressed support for increased collaborations between the fields of PMNR and obstetrics and gynecology, especially as it relates to systems for clinical referrals, medical education, or research initiatives. Many of these providers' trepidation in addressing reproductive health topics stem from uncertainty in who to refer their patients to, little formal training related to reproductive health, and scant availability of evidence-based approaches, approaches to addressing these women's questions and concerns. The results of this study begin to fill the gap in knowledge surrounding PM&R perspectives on addressing reproductive health care for women with physical disabilities. While PM&R clinicians' comfort level in addressing reproductive topics varied based on clinical experience, they collectively viewed these topics as important to meeting their patients' healthcare needs. To obtain greater confidence and clinical competence in providing reproductive health care for women of this group, clinicians expressed a need to gather and disseminate more medical knowledge on this issue. They thought that this might be best achieved by increasing collaborative efforts with their ob colleagues to fill current gaps in medical and clinical knowledge. Though these results are representative of the views of only a few uh, PM&R providers, they contribute support for increased education of PM&R professionals in issues related to reproductive health care for women with physical disabilities, as well as increased collaboration with ob specialists to learn more about and develop better approaches to providing reproductive health care for these women. Ideally, such efforts would be a step toward reducing reproductive health care disparities for women with physical disabilities. Thank you very much for tuning into my presentation. Below, I've listed my references and my contact information should you have further questions. I will also be available during the forum period for discussion and questions. Have a great day.